Hey everybody, Mr. B. Um, and today it's my turn to share with you a poem in celebration of National Poetry Month. So something that's been a little bit troubling in recent years is how we become kind of increasingly accustomed to expect the worst in people instead of the best. Um, and if there's one thing that has been kind of a silver lining in terms of this pandemic is that we've seen a, a resurgence or a triumph of things like kindness and empathy in places you know we might not have we might not have expected to to see. Um, and so I chose a poem that that speaks to that, um, and it's entitled "Gate A4 by Naomi Shihab Nye. Uh, and I have two caveats. The first is for all you Arabic speakers, I'm sorry. Uh, for, for butchering a line, um, saying that preemptively. And two, uh, it is going to be a, a downright miracle if I can get through this without tearing up a little bit, because it gets me right here. Uh, if you can't tell from my red eyes, I've tried this a few times. Anyhow, here we go. Gate A4, Naomi Shihab Nye, written in 2007. Wandering around the Albuquerque airport terminal, after learning my flight had been delayed four hours, I heard an announcement. If anyone in the vicinity of gate A4 understands any Arabic, please come to the gate immediately. Well, one pauses these days. Gate A4 was my own gate. I went there. An older woman in full traditional Palestinian embroidered dress, just like my grandma wore, was crumpled to the floor, wailing. Help, said the flight attendant. Talk to her. What is her problem? We told her the flight was going to be late, and she did this. I stooped to put my arm around the woman and spoke haltingly. Shudawa, Shubikud Habibti, Stanishwe, Minfadlik, Shubitsawe. The minute she heard any words she knew, however poorly used, she stopped crying. She thought the flight had been canceled entirely. She needed to be in El Paso for major medical treatment the next day. I said, No, we're fine. You'll get there. Just later. Who's picking you up? Let's call him. We called her son. I spoke with him in English. I told him I would stay with his mother till we got on the plane and ride next to her. She talked to him. Then we called her other sons, just for the fun of it. Then we called my dad, and he and she spoke for a while in Arabic, and found out, of course, they had ten shared friends. Then I thought, just for the heck of it, why not call some Palestinian poets I know and let them chat with her? This all took up two hours. She was laughing a lot by then, telling of her life, patting my knee, answering questions. She had pulled a, a, home, a sack of homemade mamul cookies, little powdered sugar crumbly mounds stuffed with dates and nuts from her bag, and was offering them to all the women at the gate. To my amazement, not a single woman declined one. It was like a sacrament. The traveler from Argentina, the mom from California, the lovely woman from Laredo. We were all covered with the same powdered sugar and smiling. There is no better cookie. And then the airline broke out free apple juice from huge coolers, and two little girls from our flight ran around serving it and they were covered with powdered sugar too. And I noticed my new best friend, by now we were holding hands, had a potted plant poking out of her bag, some medicinal thing with green furry leaves. Such an old country tradition, always carry a plant, always stay rooted somewhere. And I looked around that gate of late and weary ones and I thought, this is the world I want to live in, the shared world. Not a single person in that gate, once the crying of confusion stopped, seemed apprehensive about any other person. They took the cookies. I wanted to hug all those other women too. This can still happen anywhere. Not everything is lost. Thanks for listening, y'all. Miss you.